Today, we are going to talk about turning reviews into contacts. Um, and this is a, a really interesting subject. This is something that Craig and I both cover in more depth um, in courses. I've been doing this for years now and covering this topic. Um, but we're going to talk today in, in sort of a, a short version of what we do and give you some, some of the best tips and tricks um, as to why you want to use reviews in your business, the, you know, where they're headed. Um, all that fun stuff. And then what you can do to turn those reviews directly into contacts. Um, so before we get into that, though, I do want to mention um, that this is brought to you by two groups. Uh, first of which is the Real Estate Technology Institute. Craig is the founder there. And if you're interested in any sort of uh, learning when it comes to technology or marketing in your business, definitely check that out. Um, you're already a member of the Agent Inner Circle, but you might not know about my other group, which is Service for Life. This is part of the Agent Inner Circle, um, and this is one of our products that we offer to a lot of agents. And it's really for agents who are looking to grow a 100% repeat and referral business. Um, agents that are looking to work their sphere, make sure that no one falls through the cracks and really drive business and do some referral programming. Uh, inside of that audience and it'd be amazed how many agents we've been able to get to 100 percent uh, repeat and referral business in a pretty short amount of time and this has worked for agents for uh, even before my time over 20 years at this point so definitely check out uh, real estate technology institute reti.us as well as service for life and check that out at service for life.com um, all right anything before we dive in here craig uh, no, I mean, we got a lot of ground to cover, but I mean, basically, we talk about it all the time. Your sphere of influence is your best path to business and future business. Absolutely. And, and that's great segue, Craig, because that's exactly what we're going to be talking about today is that same sphere of influence, how to get reviews from that sphere of influence, um, you know, and the people that you've worked with in the past, set yourself up for that. Uh, and then, you know, we're even going to get into handling a bad review, which I think all probably had to handle at some point or another. Um, so we'll, we're going to have a lot of fun today. All right, so let's dive on in. Um, as I said, we're going to cover a lot. We're going to be covering why reviews are important. Uh, where are people reviewing you? Uh, how do I stay up to date on reviews? What's most important in a review? Uh, how do you get a review to begin with? Um, six strategies for managing a bad review. And then what we're going to do to turn that review into a referral or into other business. Um, and we'll, we'll talk a little bit about creating that experience worth reviewing and referring at the very end. Um, so first of all, let's talk a little bit about reviews in general um, and sort of how they work, where people look for them, how they're used, because I think there might be some misnomers about um, you know, how reviews work, and we really want to make sure we get those uh, totally covered up. Now, one thing I want to do here, Craig, I forgot to share my screen over to you so you can see my slides. There we go. So now we're both working off the same thing. Perfect. Um, Power right. cooking. There we go. Um, so one thing we got to sort of pay attention to is that consumers are already using reviews outside of real estate. And we're using reviews outside of real estate a lot in a lot more abundance than before it started getting transitioned into the real estate industry. And what that means is that people's already developed a lot of conditions and how they use reviews to begin with. So it's not so much about coming up with your own system for reviews. It's really more about figuring out um, how can I work within the system of reviews that already exists and is already out there. Now, we know that people uh, look for you know, before buying or renting movies or before even watching free movies at this point, um, people are checking out reviews, right? Beyond that, it's a, you know, people go to TripAdvisor before vacations. You check out customer, customer reviews on Amazon before buying books or other products. Um, you look to Yelp for all sorts of info about, you know, local businesses or, or other restaurants. So it, we're already out there using reviews in a whole lot of depth. Um, and we have a great comment here, Gary Rogers. Hey, Gary, good to see you. Uh, Gary says, hey, guys, great topic. Uh, great to see you, Gary, and thank you so much. We, we definitely love this one. Um, and something we've, we, like I said, we both cover in, in a good bit of depth. So 
the importance of online reviews is really paramount these days because it keeps growing and the amount that it influences people uh, is absolutely kind of absurd. Uh, this one blows me away, and I'm, I'm going to put this out there, Craig, but let's, I want to talk to you about this one for a second. 88% of consumers trust online reviews as much as personal recommendations. Now, this comes out of a study that we're going to talk about in a little bit more depth um, that Bright Local puts out. But, Craig, I want to talk to you about that for a second. 88% of consumers yeah. trust online reviews as much as personal recommendations. I, it's crazy. I mean, I'm, I say it all the time. Like, people trust strangers even more than they trust advertising or people they know sometimes these days. Like, yep. but it, that, the first time I saw that stat, it blew me away as well. Like, yeah, that's literally saying they trust strangers more than anything now. It's amazing. It, it's absolutely amazing. <clears throat> um, and it's kind of funny to think about how, you know, we even, you know, when you flip it, right? And you start saying, well, yeah, you know, I do that too. Right. Like a friend of mine says, oh, this is a great restaurant. And then I go, I go look at the reviews and go, yeah, but it's got a three star ratings. Right. So, <laughs> you know, like it's, it's tough. And I feel like a lot of us do that, but we've got to be pay attention. Like I said, to how we use these systems already. We use these review platforms. We use all of these things um, out there. And one of the other things that I'm always kind of curious about is some of the metrics around what we look for inside of the review. Um, so, you know, the, some basic ones, 72% of consumers say that positive reviews make them trust the local business more. I think that's true for all of us. But this next one is really the standout, I think, here, which is 92% of users will use a local business if it has at least a four-star listing. And we're, we're going to talk about that more and more. But one thing um, I, I kind of want to just talk with you quick here, Craig, is it, it's really all about stars, isn't it? Like, yeah. it's amazing when you look at the stats across the board. And, uh, you know, how do you use that whole star system? I mean, I, me personally, I rely on it almost everything I do. It, it's kind of like you were saying. If something has a lot of high positives, that definitely influences me. But I, and I'm not the only person that does this. I personally, a lot of times I'll hunt out the negative reviews and I'll see if there's a pattern there going on. Like, okay, they've, they've had 10 one stars, but all 10 for the same thing. I'm like, all right, there's something going on here. Like you look for patterns as a consumer a lot of times. Absolutely. It's so, so very true. Um, and I just want to show one more thing here. Um, about reviews because and, and we'll cover one more stat here uh just quickly on reviews because this is going to pay a lot of importance to what we're going to talk about throughout this presentation and kind of how to pay attention to what we're doing in terms of getting reviews um bringing them in and then consistently getting them time and time again so 40 percent of consumers form an opinion by reading one to three reviews Okay, that's up from years past. 73% are one to six reviews. Again, what we're seeing here is that, and, and you can see from the last stat, 88% are one through 10, meaning people might read up to 10 reviews that you, know, that you have on your site, that you have about you, etc. They're not going further. Than Most people are not reading Paragraph after paragraph after paragraph, review after review after review. And what this means is that you can sort of drown out. If you do get a bad review, you can drown that out. We'll talk about that a little bit more. But it's also important to know that people pay attention to how recently reviews are left. And I don't want to get too in the weeds in terms of statistics and all that to begin today. But I do want you to know that if you have reviews, it's not just about having a review um, up or having 10 reviews on your site. Because if your 10 reviews are from three years ago, they have far less importance than if they're from the last few months. So it's not just about having reviews, it's about consistently getting reviews over time. Um, and that's really what we're going to talk about today is a uh, strategy and some tactics to be able to do that. Um, anything else you want to sort of add in terms of some of the stats or things like that before we we dive in um i mean i, I well i know 
I don't want to stat him to death. I think the numbers you provided are doing a great job painting the picture. Um, but the other thing that I'll throw in is, and you talked about it, people are doing this with everything in their lives. It doesn't matter if it's a small little one-time purchase or if it's something really important to them, they're doing this. But with something of the gravity of a real estate transaction, which is usually the biggest thing in that person's life, they're <laughs> definitely doing a little bit of research. They're, they're not just, you know, off the whim, I'm going to go with this real just because I found their listing online. Yep. They really do look into things like this at a pretty high number. Absolutely. And I think that's a great segue, Craig, because um, something I'll, I'll add here for us is that um, it's not just about consumers and, you know, like you said, it's where they, it's them doing research and they're researching you and the topics and all that sort of stuff and the, the market and the house and, and so on before they're making moves. But you got to pay attention to that. People are doing this research where they are accustomed to do it. So there might be some places where you want people to leave reviews, but that doesn't necessarily mean that's where people are going to see reviews. And Craig, I don't know if you want to talk a little bit about um, some of the different options here in terms of where people are leaving reviews and where people are really finding them uh, in, you know, out there in the wild. Yeah, I mean, and this list definitely isn't even all inclusive, um, but I usually say, like, as realtors always ask me, uh, and I'm sure you get the question all the time as well, Alex, all right, where should I, I can't get my customers to go to 10 different places, where should I ask my customers to give me reviews? Um, and, you know, I usually tell them the major ones that the customers are using is, you know, you've got Google, Facebook, Zillow, Realtor.com. Some of them do it through, you know, Yelp has also become uh, a major option as well because it's the search engine for so many things. Um, some people do it through LinkedIn. I mean, there's different avenues, but the major ones, you got to think about where you can build up a base of positive reviews uh, because customers are using different channels. Absolutely. Now, a couple of ones that you mentioned there and something that I, I do want to mention is that when you're sort of looking for where to point people to consolidate your reviews, you really want to look for a platform that makes people have a logged in account, have some sort of user account to be able to leave a review for you. Um, there are a number of sites out there, a number of platforms out there, things like that, where people don't necessarily have to log in uh, or be a real person or associate an account with themselves to leave a review. Those reviews tend to be looked at um, by consumers as not as trustworthy. Because it could be anybody. It could be the restaurant themselves leaving a review. It could be you leaving yourself a review. Um, so the, the better job you can do to point people toward, you know, leaving reviews in a place where they actually have to have an account um, or be logged in in some way is going to go a lot further than if you did it otherwise. Now, we mentioned some of the ones there. Craig, do you have any favorites? To me, I mean, of course, you can't not do the Zillow and Realtor.coms, um, you know, because if they're in that search process there. Beyond that, to me, it's I always recommend Google and Facebook as the next two. Uh, and then the wild card that some realtors get into and some don't is Yelp. Um, and the reason I throw in Yelp is a lot of people don't know this. Not only is Yelp the biggest customer review site there is um, across all industries, but also Yelp is the uh, business directory for Siri on all Apple devices. Uh, I believe it's on Travelocity and a few other major internet portals. So a lot of sites that try to find businesses with reviews use Yelp as their directory. Absolutely. Um, a good friend of ours, uh, Richard Silver up in Toronto, has done a, a really awesome job um, with his uh, Yelp profile, getting re his reviews on Yelp, all that sort of stuff. So if you want to see something that is a really great example of somebody that is doing it on, on a Yelp as an option, um, I would definitely check out uh, Richard Silver over there. He does a, a really, really solid job and has for a long time. So definitely check that out. Um, but, you know, so we've talked a little bit about sort of pointing people in the direction of where to leave reviews and, and some ideas on, you know, picking some of these platforms and not letting people just sort of go into the wild. Um, but we've given you at least some information on, you know, where you might want to direct people and how you might want to direct people. But the other big thing that we run into a lot is that folks uh, will get reviews, but not know they received them. 
because I mean, it's not the easiest thing to keep your eye on all of these different sites and, you know, being reviewed across all of these sites and so on. But there are some tools out there that we definitely use to do this for ourselves. Um, I know one that I am partial to is uh, Google Alerts. I know, Craig, you use yep. that as well. Um, Google Alerts is essentially uh, Google every day and multiple times a day, really every second of every day, is indexing the internet. And what that means is they're going out and they're looking for what new content or what content has been changed about the internet what's out there that they can happen to find so what you can do is you can use the power of that and say and ask google to when they find that new piece of information that's related to a specific thing to send you an alert and say hey we found something that's either new or something that changed related to a piece of information that you want to know so a lot of people myself i use my name now for some folks that might not be easy if your name is very very uh, common, um, but there are some more advanced searches that you can do uh, in order to set that up. But your local business name, um, competitors' names, there's all sorts of interesting things that you can do. And Craig, do you have any favorite uh, Google Alerts that you have set up? I mean, I'm just real estate in general. Mm -hmm. um, also, whatever geographic area you live in, like your city or uh, area. Uh, and then me personally, I do ones, for, you know, because our our my major area is tech and marketing. I've got one set up for Google itself, for Amazon and Facebook. And, you know, just I want to know if anything major is hitting in the tech or marketing world that I don't know about. Absolutely. That's a great way to use it. And anything that you want to know, um, some people do it where let's say you have a, a piece of legislation, a very specific to real estate that's going through in your area. You want to know everything that there is to know about that legislation and all the news that's coming out about it. You can put that in um, and search that. And anything, some, anytime something new comes on, you're going to get it. Now, one of the best features. Yeah, and by the way, all it does is it generates basically an email newsletter, like a list of articles, like right. links to articles that are stuff on the internet I found about you. Yep. So you're talking about a 10 second eyeball quickly checking those emails each morning. Absolutely. You're not talking about a huge time investment, but if you see something in there, you're like, oh, I didn't know about this that review, it, it notifies you right away about it. And one of the nice features with it as well is you can tweak how often you get those notifications. So that email, instead of say every morning, you can get it once a week. And you can have your Friday digest where you're reading about all the things that happened over that past week um, in terms of your update. And so like it, you know, like we talked about, this is all personal. So whatever you set up, you can set it up to your timing, how often you want to see it. You can go anywhere from immediately the moment Google finds it uh, all the way to, I believe it's up to once a month. They might have changed that though. So don't, please don't go. Um, so, all right. So we talked a little bit about finding reviews. I want to get next into talking a little bit more about what we're looking for when we're trying to get people to review us. So obviously, you know, we all love these sort of long-winded, great paragraphs about how amazing we were to work with and the most wonderful, all that sort of stuff. Um, but people actually pay the most attention to stars. Well, we talked about this a little bit before. Um, it is the number one most important thing. And the number two is quantity of reviews. So the number of reviews that you've gotten over whatever period of time, whether it's, you know, 100, 200, 300, whatever it is, a bulk of reviews is the second most. So it's not about getting people to write a thousand paragraphs, right? It's not about getting people to write a ton of wonderful things about you and take all this extra time. Now, that's great, too. If you want to get that as well, great. But, but as a base goal for what you're trying to do, is get people to leave you some stars, right? Four or better. And you want them to at least put something, or a sentence, couple sentences. But like we said, what we're really adding most to is number one, how many stars you're getting. And number two, the actual quantity of reviews that you're going to end up with. And people tend to take a sort of, what we call holistic view when they're looking at this. So what that really means is if you, uh, if you look at this here, um, is people really care about four and five stars, but you don't have to be perfect. 
I mean, that's a very, very small drop off between four to five, but an enormous drop off between three to four, right? I mean, uh, Craig, I'm sure you're the same way, right? Like, we both, it's like three. Eee. Absolutely. Yeah, and, and if I could add one thing, the other thing you've got to, when you talk about volume, number of positive or reviews or just number of reviews, and you mentioned this very briefly earlier, what I always say is, no matter how amazing of a business person you are, you've always got to kind of future-proof yourself of a, against the one eventual bad re review you're going to get. Because I don't care how amazing you are, you're going to run into that one crazy customer who you just could not please or a fake review that wasn't even legit, you're going to get the negative review eventually. And if you have, let's say, 99 positive reviews and a negative one comes along, you drop down to a 4.99, right? Like you're still at a 99 score. But if you have only five reviews and then everyone comes in, your score gets d just drilled. I mean, you get penalized like crazy. Yep, absolutely. The other thing to keep in mind, Craig, is, and I'll let you walk the uh, folks through this one here, but how recently? that you've gotten those reviews. Now, f this is for general consumers, and I tend to think that this uh, timeline stretches out a little bit further when it comes to real estate in terms of what consumers are accepting of. But I think we do have to pay attention to the fact that, um, you know, it is about recency. It can't be from years ago. Yeah. Uh, it's gotta be from months ago at this point. Yeah, I mean, well, Again, if you, especially if you don't have enough volume, okay, if, if, if it's a site where you just don't have many reviews, I don't think the how far it goes back was, would have that much of an impact. But if you're having a lot of reviews, they're going to look at the most recent ones no matter what. And it all goes back to, again, future proofing against the negative. Um, but they look at what's current. And I can tell you, like, for example, it's, I don't think it's as much applies to real estate, but when I look at things like restaurant reviews, I mean, you can sometimes see when a management change happens or ownership change happens when the reviews just go to garbage in a short period of time, mm -hmm. right? And a lot of customers do that. Absolutely true. All right, so we've kind of covered uh, for everybody exactly, you know, what you're looking for in getting a review, where you want it, and, and figuring out if you have gotten some reviews. Let's talk a little bit about making sure that you actually get that review, okay? Um, because I have a, a strategy that I use for this and it's pretty simple. It's four steps and we're going to cover all four of these today. Um, but the first one is preview and this walks through a preview, give guide, ask, and I say ask over and over and over again. So first is preview. And when we talk about preview, um, what we're really talking about here is talking with your clients at the very, very beginning of the deal to set expectations. Because bad reviews tend to happen when reality does not meet expectations. And one of the best things you can do to make sure that you are going to get a good review at the, at the end of a deal, um, at the end of working with somebody, is by making sure that you set expectations correctly going in. And I'm not just talking, oh, you want to set expectations to the level of like, Hey, here's what I'm going to do in the deal. You need to do that as well. I'm talking about set expectations of I'm going to ask you for a review at the end of this. I would really appreciate you leaving a review. And here are the things that I really am going to commit to in trying to do with this deal. And I hope that you'll review me on this criteria at the end because these are the standards that I hold myself. The better job that you do setting up that preview at the beginning, setting expectations as to exactly what, uh, what to expect and what people should expect from you, the better job when you come back at the end, you'll be at, at actually asking for that. Here's the other nice part. If you preview and tell them at the beginning that you're going to be asking them for a review at the end, they'll actually be thinking in subconsciously as things are going on, oh, that's a cool thing to review them about. That's something that I'll want to add to the review because it's special and they went out of their way to do it. So when you ask them at the end, it's not like they have to, oh my God, I have to think and I have to really you know, spend a lot of time figuring out what I'm going to say. A lot of times it makes it easier for people um, because they've, you know what, they've, they, they know exactly what they're going to say. They've already thought about it. Um, is there any other big things that you suggest in terms of previewing it at the, the beginning of the deal, Craig? 
No, I think I think expectations, like you said, are huge. Um, and throughout the process, it's I mean, you know, every year the top two complaints concerns that realtors are communication and follow through. Um, so I always kind of teach at the beginning, you got to get out of your customers. What's your preferred method of communication? How often do you expect communication? Because if you're not meeting those needs, if you don't know what the needs are, you're not going to meet them. So you almost have to kind of get that out of a client at the beginning. How should you communicate and how often you communicate so you know you're meeting those needs? Absolutely. Now, the next one here is uh, give. And what I mean by this is to actually give them the review that you want them to use at the end of the transaction. So when, when the transaction is done, when they're happy, when everybody's elated, you send them an email and you say, I'm going to give you a link here to review X, Y, and Z, right? I would really appreciate if you would review me at whatever site. You're going to give them the place that you want them to do it. So we talked a little earlier about some places you can send them to, where you might want them to review. But I want you to actually give them the place. Don't just ask for, hey, can you please review me? You need to actually give them the place that you want them to go and use. And you need to go a step further. And that's where guide comes in. You can't ass- if I can if I can throw one yeah, more thing absolutely, on that, the given guide though um, is it's another thing you can find out from your customers either at the beginning or while the process is getting to know and working with them is ask them find out if there are certain uh, review sites that they are already users of because when a site like Yelp or Google My Business or Zillow or whatever they give more points to users who are already common reviewers on their sites. So if you have a customer who's a heavy user of Yelp, it would do you justice or be smarter for you to say, hey, can you give me the review on Yelp and guide them to the site they're already comfortable with? Yep. And then as a step further, as with guide, if they're not actually comfortable with one of those sites, you actually wanna be giving them instructions on how to use that site, where to go, what to input, like what, not the actual words, right? You're not going to give them the text of what to say, um, but it's some general instructions on how to actually go and input a review um, where you're looking for that review. If they say, well, I don't really use any, any site. Well, that's the time you say, well, hey, I'm going to give you some guidance. I'm going to help you do this. I'm going to show you exactly how to do it. And again, that's one more way you're adding extra value for them at the end of the deal. Um, it's obviously self-serving, but giving and then guiding really gets people over that hurdle. Now I said over, and I think I was segueing there to, to asking over and over and over again, uh, for a review from people. Here's what I'll say. Just if you send an email once saying, Hey, can you please review me? And they don't at, submit a review. That doesn't mean they don't like you. That doesn't mean that they had a terrible experience. That doesn't mean any of those sort of things. Um, in fact, what that means is that they're busy. They either just bought or just sold a home and are in the middle of doing whatever it is, right? They're busy. Um, oftentimes, you are going to need to remind them over and over again with follow-ups to get that review. And most times, there are a number of studies about this. Most times, people are not angry with you for following up. Um, most times people think of it as a good reminder and say, oh, well, you know, I appreciate the reminder. I really meant to do this. I just, I didn't have time. I didn't have a moment to do it. The, the other trick to this is don't send those reminders or secondary asks for review at the same time. If you're sending it at, you know, 9 a.m. every Monday, maybe they're taking their kids to school at 9 a.m. every Monday, right? Maybe they're on their way back from school to work because it, whatever it is. Switch it up afternoons, evenings, right? Days of the week, different things like that to, to try to get that follow up correctly so that people will catch it at a good time um, and be a lot more likely to, uh, to submit that review for you. Now, there are some other tactics to uh, getting a review, and we'll talk about those just sort of briefly. One of which is people use direct incentives where they give out gift cards or they give out stuff for people to leave reviews. It's seen success in a lot of industries, so I'm not going to knock it. It might not be my favorite strategy, um, but uh, it's worked for a lot of people out there. 
The other thing that I really recommend to get people to leave reviews is customer engagement and social recognition. Um, when you do get a review, thanking people publicly for that review, right? That is huge, 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 because it creates enough um, positive reinforcement that people know that if they leave a review in the future, they're probably going to get that same sort of benefit or that same sort of, uh, you know, public thanking, that public, that little bit of extra from you. So those tend to be very, very big um, when you look at a lot of different industries out there. And it's definitely something that works well inside of real estate. Um, all right. So we've talked about getting the review itself. I think it's time we dive into managing a bad review. What do you think, Craig? As I mentioned, they're going to happen. They are going to happen. No matter how great you are, you're going to run into that one whack job. Absolutely are. Um, now, there's a number of things that, that you can do, and uh, I always recommend there are six things that I really think people should pay attention to uh, when it comes to managing a bad review. Number one is contact the review site. So if the review is bogus and i mean like legit bogus and we've seen this before we're like for whatever reason competitors submit a review about somebody else and it's not even real that you've never worked with that person that deal never happened you've never met somebody with that name in your life those <laughs> amazingly those happen um First thing you can do is contact the review site. Now, be aware, different review sites have very different policies on what they will and will not remove from those sites. So really depends, and you've got to kind of understand, and that's why I say familiarize yourself with the culture of these online review sites. Understand that some of them are more about, um, you know, sort of positive reinforcement, and some of them are a lot more about, you know, critiques so that you can improve your business. So really pay attention to what sites you're sending people to, what sites people are reviewing on, and the rules within those sites um, about getting content removed or things like that. Beyond the site itself, um, I always say to join the conversation. And, but I have a caveat with that, which is that it's not immediate and it's not an anger. So I've seen this time and again where people get a bad review and then the agent or somebody comes back and they just are, it turns into an internet battle and they're back and forth. It's just, it's no good and it doesn't look good for anybody. Um, one of the best strategies that you can do with this is to, uh, interestingly enough, this is, there are a lot of people throughout history that have done this. One of my favorite examples is uh, Abraham Lincoln would write letters that were never sent. Angry, all sorts of whatever letters, and then put them in a drawer and he'd sit on them for a day. And by the next day, he'd say, Well, I'm going to send a much more um, a tempered review or tempered uh, response or whatever it is in the letter. So, definitely something to think about um, is take some time to cool off. After a bad review, it's not the biggest deal. People are looking at stars. They're looking for how many reviews you have. They're looking for all sorts of other stuff. I know it might be, uh, you might feel impatient about getting a response out, but take a day, take two days, cool off, and make sure that you are in a good state of mind before you respond. When you do respond, you want to highlight the positive information there. Um, and, you know, if maybe something did go wrong with the deal, but some other thing worked out, Hey, I'm really sorry that X, Y, and Z happened. This thing was really challenging, but at least we were able to get that house that you really wanted. At least we were able to right, highlight positive moments. Um, the other big thing, we've talked about this before, but encourage positive reviews. You just want to drown out the bad ones. Uh, and last but not least is a, a strategy for responding to threats. Um, every now and again, you'll have people who will might get upset, at something in business and say, well, I'm going to do X, Y, and Z online. I'm going to go leave negative reviews as sort of a threat. That's up to you. Um, most of the business books say to do whatever you can to try to appease that person, work it out with that person, and so on before they go and do that. Um, but that's really up to you and your strategy of how you want to manage that. 
Now we had a, a way, question we, here. We got, we got two. We got. A, I don't know if you saw it. I was going to say we got a good question in the chat. Yes. Uh, Drang asked, "How can we get clients to leave reviews on multiple platforms?" So, good news, bad news. So we'll start with the bad. News. Bad news is <laughs> um, that a lot of the platforms don't allow outside sources to automatically submit reviews, meaning there's not a great place where you can say, well, submit it here, and it'll automatically go to these 12 other places, because those platforms themselves don't allow that. They, they say, you know what? You have to be inside of our platform to leave a review. We're not going to do it from an API. We're not going to do it from coding or whatever from the outside, right? You have to be inside of our platform. So there is nothing that actually does it in an automated fashion across every single platform out there because it's just not possible um, from a technical standpoint. However, there are some strategies to get people to leave their reviews in multiple places for you. And some places allow you to even post your own content as a review, although I don't tend to trust those sites um, as much. So. Greg, is there anything you want to add to that? Um, to me, it goes back to the ask. Um, yeah. When you're working with that customer, setting their expectations and everything, ask them, could you possibly leave me a review on a site or two? Right? Like, you're never going to get six out of them. I mean, unless you just yep. made the best friend on earth and, the, you know, you're going to become lifelong friends after the transaction. You're shooting for one to maybe three max out of a client. So just say, would you, would you possibly give me a review on a couple of sites and see what they said? You know what I mean? Yep. And they might say, oh, yeah, I'll do it on a bunch, and they'll end up doing it just one. Like, it really ends up just being a convenience factor to the customer, which is why, like, using tools like a testimonial tree or Reach 150 or I mean, there's a few them out there that'll help you kind of send out requests where it makes it easier for the customer to go to more than one location is a, is a helpful thing. Yep. It really is. Absolutely. And it's helpful for them to do it. The other thing you can do and, and, um, I'll just mention it quickly is, is we talked quickly about uh, direct incentives as an option for getting reviews to begin with. I've also seen direct incentives used successfully to get people to leave multiple reviews in multiple places. So if they do leave a review in that one location that you're trying to get them to go to, you can then send them an email and say, hey, I really appreciate it. Thank you so much. I'm going to post it on social. I'm going to you know, thank them in all the different ways and then say, hey, for an extra, whatever it is, $50 gift card, $100 gift card, would you mind posting that same review in these other places? Um, that's another tip or trick that we've seen work in the past for people is to offer some kind of direct incentive for people to go do that and to add that into other places um, and, you know, add that into your, uh, you know, into your strategy. Anything else, Craig? Um, not on that, but the one thing I want to throw in just for the managing a bad review is I obviously got to also think about the fact that people see responses to your challenge back. Yep. So you don't want to be overly aggressive. I mean, you, you kind of like Alex mentioned, you got to kind of own it a little bit and not just be like, this person's nuts because other people can read that and think you're the one that's not professional. Absolutely. Absolutely. And that's part of the way people end up turning uh, business from reviews is I, I've actually seen this before is people look at yep. like oh wow you dealt with that person so well and they leave uh, they end up working with that person because they they see how they deal with conflict so you are always on on uh you know the world is your stage as they say right you are always on stage at some level in terms of uh being in front yep. of your clients Agreed. and being in front of the public on that now let's talk a little bit about turning that review um, into a referral into other business, because there's a very simple strategy that you can use um, where it's what we call guided surveys. And I'm sure you've seen this from other things. This is used quite a bit uh, in the hotel industry, where after you stay at a hotel, you will often get an email that says something like a simple question. How would you refer us on a scale of one to 10? Or if it's a hotel, how was your stay on a scale of one to 10? 
Now, what's interesting is, and in the email itself, you have the option to click on the numbers, one, two, whatever it is inside of the email. Well, funny enough, where you end up getting sent, based on that number that you click, goes to different places. So if someone clicks numbers one through six, they get immediately sent to something that's asking them about what you could improve, how you could work better together. And this is just a form on your website about how you could do a better job. Okay. Now this is, you want a notification about this immediately when they click on that and you want to make sure that you're reaching out to them to figure out what went wrong, why they're not happy. Because if they're rating you a one through a six, things probably didn't go great. If it's a seven through eight, you want to find out what you can improve upon. And again, you might want to send them to a, a page on your site that's a, a form they can fill out um, and talks about the one thing that you can improve. And if they say it's a nine or a 10, then you send them to something, to a link of actually leaving a review for you. Um, hotels have started doing this. We've seen other industries start doing this. I'm interested to see how this makes its way more and more into the real estate industry. But this is a way that companies are able to save themselves some of those bad reviews from making it online at all, right? If somebody clicks that one through six and they're directed to somewhere that doesn't really show up publicly, and it allows the company and allows you to figure out what went wrong and how you can fix it before that information ends up online, um, whereby guiding them towards something that's uh, better or, you know, um, where they're actually going to leave a review if they go. Nine Makes sense, Craig. Anything you want to add? No, I think, I think that I think that is a trend you're going to see more and more of. Because um, it is smart; it's, it gives you a chance to diffuse the situation before it becomes a nightmare. Absolutely. Now we've talked about preview it, give it, guide it, ask over and over again. I don't want to get too far. We, like I said, we're going to try to keep these ones, the workshops, kind of short. So I don't want to get into a whole depth um, on those referrals. But what I do want you to pay attention to is this, um, is actually, let me back up here one sec. What I do want you to pay attention to is this, those folks that mark themselves nine and 10, those are the folks that you are consistently following up with for referrals. They have told you that they are extremely happy with your services. They're the most likely people to refer you and to refer you business. And by setting up a survey in this form, you not only set yourself up for success online um, and getting more business because people see all of those positive reviews, stars, so on, you also set yourself up with the exact list of people that you need to be following up with to send you business. So there is a two-pronged approach to gaining business from uh, generating reviews and getting those reviews online. Everybody learned some stuff today? Everybody pick up some new info? I certainly hope so. Let me know in chat if you, uh, if you picked up some great info today. Um, the last thing I will mention, though, and, and I do want to mention quickly here, is uh, you absolutely want to be remarkable and inspire confidence. And there's a great quote from Maya Angelou that says, I've learned that people will forget what you said, people will forget what you did, but people will never forget how you made them. Um, and that is so, so very true. And I think that's really the key when it comes to these reviews is that you've got to set your expectations and then you've got to exceed them in what you're doing to really get those, those stellar reviews and drive more business from it. So always keep that in mind to try to be remarkable. All right. Anything else, Craig, before we dive into what's coming up next and all the fun stuff? Nope. All right. So let's do oh, that. Laid out this topic well. All right. So today we talked about uh, returning reviews into leads. We've got two more uh, courses coming up this month, one of which is uh, automating your lead generation. So Craig and I are, uh, I don't want to say masters of automation, but we are masters of automation. Um, you would be amazed <laughs> the amount of things that Craig and I are able to automate in our lives. Uh, and automate in our lead generation. So um, we're going to be covering that in a lot more depth uh, on 712 on Monday. So tune in for that one. That is a free workshop. Uh, and then on 719, we are doing the Leads Masterclass, which is everything you want to know about leads. I mean, how to generate them, 
I, yeah, I mean, literally everything. It is, we're going to go through a lot of depth <laughs> on uh, how you can generate leads, how you can generate leads from different sources, how you can generate good leads, um, and not just uh, any old lead that's out there on the internet. So we are going to have a lot of fun in that masterclass. I'll also mention that the uh, masterclass is still a early ticket um, prices. So uh, if you sign up today, you will get um, ten dollars off. They're normally thirty-five. Sign up today, you're gonna get uh, get it for twenty-five. Uh, so worth it. Definitely worth signing up today. All right. Anything else, Craig? Before we close this down? No, no. Just get on board for the uh, the next workshop and the masterclass. I mean, the, we love to see more and more people in these each week. So that's the deal. Absolutely. Um, that's the other thing. If these workshops have been helpful to you, we would really appreciate you inviting your friends in um, into the Aging Inner Circle group as well as into these workshops directly. Uh, we would hugely appreciate that. So anything you can do there, uh, you know, thank you so much if you have gotten value out of this. All right. Well, before we close it down, I'm going to mention one more time that these are uh, all of these workshops, these free workshops, as well as the super inexpensive price. Um, on these master classes are all because of two organizations, uh, the Real Estate Technology Institute, as well as Service for Life. Um, if you are interested in anything to do with technology learning, uh, definitely check out reti.us. Um, or if you are interested in building a 100% repeat and referral business, check out serviceforlife.com. Okay. All right. Well, thank you to everybody today. We greatly appreciate everyone spending some time with us. Uh, we hope this was valuable for you and you got some valuable information out of it. Um, this was definitely the short version of this. Craig and I do a much more in-depth version, so keep your eyes peeled for those because uh, Craig and I are now making our way back out on the road, uh, <laughs> back out to conferences, back out to all that fun stuff. So keep your eyes peeled for uh, when we might be making it to your neck of the woods. All right. Awesome. Well, thank you so much. Uh, everyone, I hope you have a wonderful day and as always, best wishes for your success.